All right, so um, I wanted to make a video for this channel on how to uh, use astrology in a way that might not be, um, you might not be able to read about it on the internet very effectively because what you can find on the internet oftentimes is horoscopes. And horoscopes, what they are typically, is a very reductive representation of a chart that doesn't take into account a lot of um, aspects of this chart that are more hidden. You have to use calculations to get them to extract that data from the chart. So when you see a circle chart or if you're doing Vedic astrology, you see a, a square chart, those are basically the same thing. They're a 360-degree field that um, has certain data encoded within it. Now, there's different levels of resolution that you can look at that data at. And a large part of it, of that data, involves using math to extract um, patterns from that circle or square chart. I personally prefer the circle chart because it's more translatable to things that other things that work in a circle so you can see the correspondences more easily so for instance um, music can be depicted in a circle color can be depicted in a circle um, obviously like angles the human body all our joints move in circles um, design architecture all these things they they have the same geometry that has the basic um, area of a circle encoded in like the sum of the the interactions between all the different parts. So with that being said, a large part of internet horoscopes will tell you certain things, but often, often you're getting the same data. And it, the reason you're getting that same data is because it's the simplest data to extract from the basic three dimensions that you get all charts from, which are obviously like the things you input on all astrology websites, which are um, time, uh, like the actual time of day, the date, and your location on Earth, meaning like your city or your latitude and longitude, um, which is basically your position in 3, 4D space, so 3D and time. So what I wanted to uh, talk about today is diagnosing um, issues in your life using astrology. And I know that could be like, oh, like that's very, like you can't diagnose mental illness using astrology. I'm not talking about that. When I say diagnose, yes, you can diagnose illnesses using astrology. That's less important than all the other problems that you're um, encountering in a day. So it's basically possible to use astrology as a troubleshooting method for your life. So obviously you have to understand the basic archetypes, the aspects of the chart, um, how the different planets, where they are in time, how they inter interrelate with each other. Understand like the idea of a square, an opposition, a conjunction, um, trine, sex cells, all that stuff. You have to know how all that works and how the fundamentals of the chart um, manifest themselves in relationship to each other. So for instance, you need to be able to understand on a pretty intuitive level what I might say what I might mean when I say, okay, you've got Sun conjunct Pluto in Aries in the fourth house, squaring Venus and Moon conjunction, in Capricorn in the first house. Like you would need to know what that means in plain English. So um, if you're not at that level of comprehension, don't diagnose people with stuff because you're just going to confuse them and confuse yourself. Just study more uh, before you try to troubleshoot with it. You need a foundation before you can move into that. Um, applications of things. This being said, once those foundations are in place, you can use astrology to troubleshoot various aspects of your life. Because whenever you have a problem in life, this might be an overgeneralization, but it works 99% of the time. There's three reasons for it. 
when you have a problem. One is it's planetary. It was in your way. You know, you're moving through space and time, and that event, that troubling event, just intersected you. And if that's the case, the only thing to do is just wait, because um, it's going to pass, and you can try to use it to your advantage if you understand what's going on. So, for instance, if you're under a Saturn transit, and it's in your second house, and you're um, going through financial hardship because of that, you basically have to understand, okay, what's Saturn asking me to do? Because Saturn is a planet of action and karma, karma reaction to your action, basically. So you pull a rubber band back, you're generating potential energy, you let it go, it flies. In a, in a sense, that's exactly what karma is. Because it basically says that whatever you do, you're going to get, and your actions have consequences. That's what Saturn is. So if you're undergoing this like two and a half year long period of financial hardship and you look it's like oh saturn's aspecting or in my second house there's nothing you can do to change that necessarily but you can do what saturn is asking you to do and then in the end if you meet those requirements it will reward you because that's what it does it reacts to cause and effect it reacts to effort in another um, example if you are looking at the moon and you wake up and you're just having a horrible day all day and the moon is in a very negative nakshatra that day, like uh, Bharani or um, which is the second lunar mansion or, uh, you know, Ashlesha or something or just in a bad house for you or conjunct like Saturn or Pluto, which is going to happen basically every 27 days, you're going to have a moon conjunction of Saturn and a moon conjunction of of Pluto or Mars or whatever, um, if that pertains to you, basically moon, moon stuff all passes. So the, you will know it's okay. This is not indicative of some larger problem. This is just the moon fucking with me today and tomorrow it'll be in a different nakshatra and it's not a big deal. So, um, that's the first way you can use astrology to troubleshoot because it tells you that like, look, not everything that happens to you was because you did something stupid or because somebody else is covertly fucking with you. Like, it could easily just be that the plant, like you are, you were walking down a path and something was in your way and now you're dealing with it, but you can't see it. So astrology allows you to see that. It's like, oh, well, there was that thing that I had to deal with today and... Now I can just react to that accordingly because I saw it coming yesterday. Um, now the second reason that things will go wrong in your life is because somebody has decided to, um, this is a metaphysical word, but try to ground it in reality, curse you. And what by that what I mean is somebody is wishing ill slash acting in a way that is going to send negativity the perception of negativity your way and if that's the case if somebody is covertly screwing with your life um typically that's like the last thing you should be troubleshooting so the first thing you should do if you have problems is look at where the planets are it's like all right is this just something unavoidable that's just in my path that i can't get around so i just have to deal with it and suck it up the next thing you should look at is, did I do something in the past that is now hitting me because I did something stupid or I made an error that is now coming back to bite me? Um, think like think, criticize yourself first before you assume that somebody else is uh, out to get you because the world's not out to get you. And if you're not making things harder for yourself, but things are still going badly for you then the next question would be, all right, is there somebody who is interacting with you, whether directly or indirectly, in a way that is leeching your life out of you or making you have to expend extra energy to keep up? And if that's the case, then you have to use your words and actions to deal with that person as you see fit. But um, whether that means positive or negative interactions, it is what it is. So... 
that's basically how you use astrology as a troubleshooting manual for your life. Step one, check transits. It's like, is this something that is unavoidable? If yes, deal with it. You know, we all wake up in bad moods a few times every lunar cycle. It's just what's going to happen. We all have bad Saturn transits every seven and a half years or something. Um, 15 years and 30 years. That's just the, the frequency it's on. Uh, you know, we all learn hard lessons. That's Jupiter. You know, sometimes crazy people try to fuck with you. That's Mars or, or North Node or something. Is You just have to be aware of that and be like, oh, that's just a transit of a malefic or a, um, you know, a hard lesson from the greater benefic, which is Jupiter. Um, that's fine. Then you look at, okay, did I mess myself up? Am I doing something that gave me bad karma? You know, did I attach a bowling ball to a string from the ceiling, push it out, and now it's coming back and you have to realize that about yourself? You know, be humble. Assume it's you first before you criticize everything else. And then um, the last step is like, all right, is there a person who's actively being, basically being a transit of Mars or Saturn upon you, meaning they're giving you depression? They're giving, they're leeching the life out of you like Saturn does. Or they're um, making you angry and violent and feel the need to react explosively like Mars. It's like, is this person basically acting like a transiting malefic in your life? And uh, if that's the case, you have to figure out what to do about that. And that's very personal, so I can't really give you advice on that. But yeah, that's basically my video of how to troubleshoot things with astrology. Hopefully that gave you some perspective. Thank you.